absolutely knackered. Wow, this is gonna be an interesting job, isn't it? we are throttle valve potentiometer fault code or should I say codes because the two potentiometers in these throttles and they're both faulty the DME isn't seeing the voltage it needs to see it'll set a fault code simple as that that's the whole logic of fault code reporting first bit of bro science people will probably say why don't you just reset the throttle well reset the throttle when you have a fault code for throttle adaption or throttle value not learned well we didn't have that we've got a physical problem with potentiometers but I thought I'd do it just to satisfy the uh, people out there who possibly might think that this would be a way to fix it. Just to show that I did do that in case anyone asks me. Now let's look at a graph. This is something I did on Excel. This is according to BMW data what you should see. Left side is the, is the throttle when it's not pressed. The right side is the throttle when it's fully pressed. As in the accelerator pedal in the vehicle. And they're the voltages you should see. You can always pause it and go back if you want to double check them. Measured values on this car, left side not so bad, however on the right side, miles out. So with the help of the good voltage graph overlaid over the bad one, we can see DKG1 on the left, there's too much voltage compared to what there should be, and the one on the right, DKG2, there's not enough voltage. Both of those things are going to stop it working and set the fault codes that we are seeing. So on the unpressed side, it works really kind of okay. The pressed side, full throttle, it's not right at all. And there's your lines there just to separate the overlay and the actual values. And you can see they're nowhere near where they need to be. There's those added values, that's where they need to be. So we've got faulty throttle. So let's take a look with the KPS and see what we measured. First of all, check we've got a five volt supply and a ground. Not showing the ground, but I'll show you the five volt. That was okay. Back probing everything, of course, making sure that we don't damage anything. So we did the first test. Throttle closed, ignition on DKG1 or Drossel Clapper potentiometer 1. Open 1.2. And then it was just a case of basically swapping the pin round and checking the other throttle potentiometer, DKG or Drossel Clap potentiometer 2. Started at 0.78. And then finished on 3.6. And then again, very, very unusual value. 1.2, 3.6. So basically compared to the live data, this was not stacking up at all. And I knew at this stage I had a pretty much damn sure I had a dodgy throttle. So all that remained to do then was just to check the pin or the pins for all the potentiometers because you know you should always always check your pins. You never know, you might have a pin that's got a slightly bad contact. However, all the pins were nice and tight, they weren't spread, and they were in good order without corrosion. And finally, very short video, but to the point, I think, here is another XL graph I've knocked up that shows the X pattern you'll find on a, a throttle potentiometer, whether it's an accelerator pedal or a throttle body. And there you can see, they should kind of meet in the middle at two and a half volts. One side, say DKG1, starts at the top at five and ends up at zero. And on the other axis, it starts at zero and ends at five. And they basically go the opposite way to each other. And that obviously ensures accuracy and some degree of redundancy. I hope you really liked this video. It was a short one, but I hope you've learned something. Please subscribe for some more amazing content. I'll make as many videos as I can. And don't forget to press notifications so you don't miss all my new content. Thanks for watching. Bye.